when David was a teenager, he was anointed as the next king of Israel. It was then that he faced Goliath, was banished by Saul, hid in the desert, lived on the run, was forced out of the nation, and fought many battles. And it was nearly 15 years between the time that he was anointed and the time he actually became king. And he was tested so that God could convert him from a shepherd to a king. And what was David's attitude through all his all his hardships? In Psalm 119, he says, Before I went astray, but now I obey your word. You are good, and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. Sisters, in hardship is your attitude to gratitude. When Joseph was a young man, he had a dream that his family would bow down to him. His brothers hated him and they sold him into slavery. They threw him in a pit, sold him as a slave. And then he was falsely accused of raping his master's wife and was thrown into prison. Again, it was nearly 14 years between his dream the time, and the time that he left prison and another 10 years for the fulfillment of the dream. Mm. What was Joseph's attitude to his hardships? In Genesis 50, he says to his brothers, Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for you to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So as you wait for the fulfillment of your dream, sisters, is your attitude I think it is so easy to be grateful in good times. That's not what I'm going to speak about today. I think there is nothing spiritual or extraordinary about that. An atheist and someone who has no relationship with God can be grateful when things are going through. But the Bible helps us to respond in an extraordinary way, as we see with David and Joseph, that we can be grateful in all situations. That is supernatural. That is worthy of a So the title I've been given is, Is Your Attitude Gratitude? And I want you to please turn in your Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18. I'm going to read from the NIV. And it says, Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Gratitude, sisters, is all about perspective. We can look at life and complain because roses have thorns. Or we can rejoice that thorns have roses. It's all about our perspective. And it's not natural. It's not natural to be grateful in tough times. As humans, we have what psychologists call a negativity bias, which means we register and remember negative experiences more. And research even shows for every one negative thought, you need five positives to counteract it. That's why, I don't know if you guys can relate, you can have a day where like 10 things go amazingly, and one conversation, one look from someone, one discouraging thing, and your whole day goes down, right? Because we have a negativity bias. I don't know if you guys can relate. So gratitude is definitely a spiritual fight. And my question, sisters, is are you fighting every day to be grateful? Do you believe, as the scripture says, that the situation you're in right now is God's will for your life? It says, give thanks in all circumstances because this is God's will for your life. God's will for my life right now is to be a disciple, to be a wife to my husband, to be a mom, to be pregnant, to be, you know, working full time, to lead women. And I'm grateful because I see all these things as an opportunity to daily pour myself out and to learn to be selfless with my energy and time, which is not natural at all. That can be a struggle. So God puts me in situations every day that stretch my faith and my capacity. Why? Because He loves me and He wants me to grow. And we can feel, I can feel overwhelmed. I can be real, right? I can feel overwhelmed. I can want to slow down. I can want to give in to comfort. I think all those things are very natural. But sometimes we can think 
that we would be a cranking disciple if we had somebody else's life. <laughs> if only, I, it would be so easy to be grateful if I had that sister's life. Yeah. Or, you know, for students, when I finish my exams, when I graduate, then I'll be like the most amazing disciples. You guys just wait, wait and see. <laughs> when I'm married, I'm going to be so spiritual, so grateful. Um. Or even for parents, right, the moms. When my kids are grown and older and they don't rely on me so much, then you guys are going to see the kind of disciple I can be. <laughs> that is not what the Bible says. God has given you the situation you have now to be excellent, to grow. Amen, sister? Gratitude helps you take ownership of your life so you're no longer a victim of your circumstances, sister. Whether it's university, children, not you know, professional work, not being in the stage that you want to be in, gratitude helps you restructure your vision and live life to the full so you can die empty. And just to end, being grateful, some of these spiritual principles we speak, of, we speak about, they're not a gift that some of us have. Sometimes we can look at very grateful, very joyful people in the fellowship, and we can have a fixed mindset and think, that person is just naturally zealous. That person is just naturally grateful. That is a lie from Satan. Yeah. If you see anyone in the fellowship who's grateful, who's growing, who's zealous, who's confident, it's taken quiet times, tears, prayers, Get there. And that's encouraging because it means any of us can get there. God yeah. doesn't give people certain special things we all can achieve yeah. this level of spirituality. And my practical sisters is simple, is to decide to be grateful. So I'm not gonna say, oh, every day write three things you're grateful for about, or no, I think we've got to make a decision and we've got to learn as godly women to train our minds to be tough enough to just make a decision every day to be grateful. Yeah. And practically, in your mornings when we pray, we love to talk a lot as sisters, but I want to challenge you to make at least half of your prayer gratitude to God. Yeah. And that might mean for the first week, maybe a very short prayer, amen. We're going to learn to talk less in front of God and fear God more. But I want to challenge you in this, go into prayer in the first half an hour, if you pray for an hour, only things that you're grateful for. Amen. They say that happy people are grateful people, but I think grateful people are happy people. Yeah. Amen.